Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today we're looking at when rubber ducks started making bath time lots of fun. In 1970, everyone's favorite orange roommate sang a song to his bath time buddy, Oh rubber ducky, you're the one, you make bath time lots of fun, coo turny to his squeaky yellow friends. While the rubber ducky had been around for at least a century prior to Ernie and his mellow melody, this Sesame Street tune shoved the bath time toy into the popular culture lexicon where it has remained ever since. From a chew toy to a piece of art to Ernie's best friend, sorry Bert, here's the story of how the world got into the bath with the rubber ducky. In 1839, Charles Goodyear discovered vulcanized rubber. Legend has it that while in an argument with his lab partner, he angrily threw a piece of salt covered rubber into a potbelly stove. The rubber charred and then hardened. Heat had combined the sulfur molecules to the rubber molecules, creating a rubbery substance that was stronger and more elastic. Whether that's really how it happened or not, Goodyear never reaped the financial rewards that often come with an invention of this magnitude. In fact, he died $200,000 in debt, or about $5 million today. Nevertheless, the vulcanization process and his subsequent patents changed the world. By the mid-1800s, products using vulcanized rubber started flooding the market, including footwear, sheet rubber, car springs, bicycle tires, and toys. The first vulcanized rubber toys were available to consumers around 1850, which included balls, rattles, and doll heads. It isn't definitively known who was the first to make a duck-shaped rubber toy, but the first rubber squeaky toy of any type was invented around the 1960s, and the first rubber duck decoy, which was used for hunting, came in the 1880s. Rubber toys at this time were nothing like we think of today. Hard, unattractive, and not malleable, they were often used as chew toys for teething babies and dogs. Like these toys, the early rubber ducky play item was not meant as a water toy. As noted by toy scholar Charles Steiner, it was cast solid and did not float well. It was also most certainly not bright yellow. As the Industrial Revolution engulfed the country, an increased percentage of Americans held factory jobs. Moving from rural America to urban cities in search of these jobs, the American urban population grew rapidly. In 1880, 8.4% of Americans were living in cities, but by 1890, that percentage had increased to 12.7%. Living space was limited, so several generations of families often lived together. This had a direct effect on many normal family activities, including bath time. Noting this, former curator at Pittsburgh's Toonsium, Joe Wass, claims that the rubber duck became affiliated with the bath because it was the only way to get kids in the tub. According to his theory on the origin of the rubber duck as a bath time companion, on Saturday nights everyone in the family would bathe for Sunday church, attempting to rid themselves of the dirt and grime of the previous week's work. Of course, there was only one tub with limited water. Dad would go first, then mum, then the oldest sibling, and so forth forth until, as was explains, then you'd get down to the littlest ones, they'd go in that dirty, filthy water that the whole family has used, so you'd need a way to get them in the tub, and suddenly the tub becomes playtime. Whether you hold to Woz's speculative theory or not, it isn't difficult to see how a toy duck, whether it floated or not, would inspire kids to start playing in the bathtub, regardless of how dirty the water purportedly was. Nevertheless, it would be several decades after this era before rubber duckies would hit the mainstream. One of the first relatively popular rubber duck toys came in about 1938, when the Siebeling Latex Products Company partnered with the newly popular movie studio Disney. They debuted a line of rubber figurines, including their character Donald Duck. Made from solid rubber like incarnations before it, this rubber duck was not meant for water play. A few years prior to Disney's Donald Duck toy, a patent was filed by Eleanor Shanahan of Eastern Maryland for what is generally considered to be the first true rubber duck-shaped bath toy. While this rubber ducky wasn't like today's version, it provided amusement nonetheless to both little children and older persons. By shooting jets 
sheets of water at unsuspecting bathers. As the pattern reads, the duck toy was supposed to produce an attractive fountain-like effect and also to enable the playing of pranks by one person upon another. Little is known about the actual production and sale of this item, but in 1941, a Los Angeles artist and sculptor took the basic design and turned it into a fortune. Even before his creation of the iconic yellow rubber ducky, Hollywood artist Peter Ganin was rather famous. Immigrating from Russia to the United States on an art scholarship, he moved to Los Angeles in the 1930s, where his work attracted the attention of longtime Los Angeles Times art critic Arthur Millier, who helped expose him to the greater art community. Ganin hit his apex in the late 1940s, when he began designing toy sculptures like a giant grinning whale and a bright yellow rubber ducky. Patenting it in 1949, the patent document for the toy duck was remarkably short and to the point, with the drawings of his design doing most of the talking, showing that it floated, squeaked, possessed a goofy smile, and it was yellow. The design was a hit, and Ganin sold millions of his yellow rubber duckies. While Ganin later also became famous for adding gothic faces to chess pieces, the duck became his most defining work. Over the next decades, the rubber ducky became synonymous with kids' bath time, with a major assist from Ernie's song. Debuting in 1970, Rubber Ducky was so beloved that it actually landed on the Billboard charts, reaching as high as number 11 in 1971. Written by Sesame Street head writer Jeff Moss and voiced by legend Jim Henson, the song became one of the show's most defining moments, even reenacted by Little Richard in the 1990s. Since then, the Rubber Ducky has had several other pop culture moments, like when 28,000 of them were accidentally dumped into the ocean during a storm. To this day, there are still reports of people finding them around the world. There's also been several occurrences of a giant inflatable duck making appearances in major cities, including stops in Hong Kong, New York, and Syracuse. And so it is that for over a century now, rubber ducks in one form or another have joined us for bath time. Presumably, the now iconic yellow ducky will continue to be a mainstay for centuries more. After all, they are kind of fun to play with while taking a soak. And now for a bonus fact. The United States has been in debt every year in its history, except very briefly for about a year around 1835, when the colorful Andrew Jackson was president. A few decades later, the Civil War happened and increased the national debt higher than it had ever been before as a percentage of the United States' gross domestic product. After the war was over, the debt rapidly fell off to nearly nothing until World War I, which once again saw the national debt rise to Civil War-era levels as a percentage of GDP. Then the Great Depression and World War II happened, the latter seeing the national debt rise to an astounding near 110% of the GDP. This is a feat that the US hasn't even come close to matching since, even with the massive public debt today, which is a little over 70% of the GDP. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below this video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.